Hello friends, welcome back to the new tutorial of Magento 2. So today we are going to learn about the Magento's directory structure. So those who haven't subscribed my channel yet, please do subscribe my channel. And if you like the video, please do like, share and comment on my video. So let's get started. So, so first of all, Magento directory structure, I'm going to give you the overview right now. So let's take an example of any of the extension portal that I have. Magento new, so app code you can see that by default the extensions are made in app code part right here you can see that the number of extensions over here right so next part so this is the one where the all the extensions are there the second one that is in the vendor folder so whenever you installed any of the extensions via composer it is installed over here so if i see the mage plaza would be there i guess but here there is no extension of that one. Uh, I think Spursh we have installed the extensions over it. You can see that advanced sorting. So you can see that it is also it resides in the vendor folder, right? So whenever you install the plugin extension using the composer, it comes over here, right? So if you are not seeing that it is not uh, installed in the app code folder, it is so don't don't like it's not there why it's always whenever you install the extension by composer it always come into the vendor folder right so moving to the next point okay so this is done where the magento modules are residing magento modules are found in app code and the front end related files are the view file so so you can see that whenever this is basically the all of the extensions part if you want to go with the theme part right so here you need to go with the design okay so in design we have a front end then we have a theme here i have built in the theme right so you can see that this is the theme portion where it always comes with the app design front end there is the theme portion will come into that part right and all the html ui part will be come into that one like magento customer template file you want to write here you can write right so this is basically that part moving to the next phase magento 2 brings a very flexible system for building and structure the modules okay so let's go to the module sections okay so which are the phases like let's go and check it out with the here so any extension that i have that is much bigger of it mm, no let's go to the test folder product project app code so here we have again no extensions mm, which 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 one which one project app co oh, there is not extension over here version 224 project app code here it is so you can go with the fme okay QK RFAQ. okay so there is a, like you know overview of the structure of that one so what is this what is the use of the block controller EDC, model, setup, UI, view, composer, and the registration. Registration we have already discussed, right? It is used for, for the module registration part. Now moving to the block. Here you can see that the block section. Here we are just adding the logic, right? Suppose. So let's start with the block part. So like uh, I want to get all the products list. Okay. So what I will do? If I want to get the product list and I want to show that in the PHTML file, then what I will do? Okay, so that reason block come into the role in the block section. Okay, you can see that this block. Okay, so this block here, I can make one of the function over to it, right? And I can call them into the PHTML file. So, so all the logic will go into here and I will call using the dollar block variable to get all the logic over here and get into that part right so that is the use case of that one okay so next part that we are coming with the controller controller basically like uh, you every time uh, whenever we do there is a controller there is a model there is a view right so in the controller we are just executing our logic the like processing the request you can see that so if i go and check this one so what is the logic of the controller Okay, so I'm not going to the step by step over here. That's the reason. So where is controller? So let me search this. Controller. 
okay so web request handlers right so whenever you can say that when i have the form of the contact us page so when i click on the uh, like the form so what will happen so it has to go somewhere okay so we have to do the routing and add the logic over here when a page is requested from the magento website the path is passed out and match the parameters found in routes.xml in the routes.xml we always define the route of this module right i want to uh, i want to just uh, make a new module that is custom contact form and in the custom contact form i have this route like custom contact form when i click on the button and give that route it will go to the controller section and controller section i'm going to write all by logic like uh, get some inputs and save that into database like the such kind of things it will that will go into the controller section next part that is the etc all the configuration files come up here like acl that is for the ss control list so which user i want to give the ss i will mention it over here configuration like by default i want my modules to be enable this to be the title this to be the heading okay di xml for the dependency injections right email templates uh, after the after the contact form is submit which email template i want to send that is the xml layout module.xml that is for the registry that is the registration of the module and the versioning of it right so moving to the next part controller console commands okay so basically console commands whenever we write over the console like uh, import or uh, any of the console commands that is running using the bin magento so these all are console commands and we can make the custom console commands and by default if you go and check that cache flush bin upgrade these all are the console commands which is which is running in the bin magento file okay so if you want the uh, like the console folder an example would be the bin magento catalog product attributes cleanup command that resides in the vendor magento module catalog console command and this is the products attribute cleanup okay if you, if you want let me open this one right so i will show you that one control l and app uh, there should be a vendor part right okay so what happened okay let's enter still not there vendor magento module catalog console command okay here we go okay okay vendor folder is not there that's the reason it's not picking up okay so by default it's all there console commands are there okay so next control controller we have discussed moving to the next part that is api and all i think in the in that section api part is not there i guess code if i go with the any of the extension that is niche fan we can use there is a blog extension so here you can see that the api folder is there okay so here you can see that auth controller auth interceptor so here you can see that the api folder right so api folder stores the contracts for the module that contains specific actions that can be reliable reliable utilized from the various places in the app okay an example of this would be the magento catalog api category list interface okay so whenever like let's open the file and check this one okay so basically api part we are using for the api management right we have to update delete get so it can be utilized by anywhere else just we have to do the dependency injection and we can use the all of the functions of it right next we have a api data data service contracts this folder contains the interface that represent the data so basically api and the api data uh, it it can it, it contains the interfaces that represents the data okay so example this would be the product interface category interface customer interface okay so in the in the form of the api there should be api data right where we have all of the like you can see that the logic over here this is basically a getter and setter functions over here you can see that if i go and just opening it like getter and setter functions are there you can see which which file i have opened category management all are the interfaces over here okay so basically the getter and setter part we are just doing over it moving to the next one the console done controller done what is left i will just explain via this part right app code 
and mage fan block community okay so api part we have done block we have done controller we have done etc or configuration files helpers are basically small lines of code which can be reusable code whenever we have uh, like uh, functionality like suppose i want to uh, like get the products so i can create a helper class and i can use that helper class using the dependency injection and i can use it anywhere i want so that are small blocks of codes which can be used reused anywhere that is called helpers i 18n this is a conf this is for the translation files okay so if i go and just check this one it is there or not i think it should be there Mm. Control F I one translation CSV files all are there and helpers occasionally useful for the small and reusable code. Okay, model model is for use for the data handling and the structure in the MVM acronym. This directory houses the models. I found that my many classes that are placed in the helper folder ought to be in the model. This folder stores anything that is related to the data structure. Okay, so this is the role of that one model data handling and the structures that we have already discussed. Now we have resource model that is used for the database interactions. So whenever you go and just check it out, then we have a model and we have a resource model, right? So this is basically used for the database interactions. If I open and check this one here, you can see that if it is numeric, then go with this parent load, right? And uh, if I go and open the any of the category, so here you can see that before delete, it will process. If like all the things of the resources are over here. So database interactions will done in the model resource model. Next we have observer. Observer, let it has observer or not? <coughs> it has. Observer is basically uh, there is a predefined list of the observers in Magento where like suppose um, when I have placed the order before place order after place order and order has been payment successfully. So these are kind of observers we have. So whenever we want to perform some kind of functionality like after the place order I want to redirect to the thank you page after the place order I want to go to that home page or something. So you can modify that observers and call that observers and add your logic to it before before event after event okay so such kind of events are the, uh, there like uh, you can use that observers and uh, manipulate the data accordingly right <coughs> so basically it's event listeners when the magento fires an event the listeners are that are attached to it are called suppose uh, like uh, I, I have placed the order so there is an event which i need to get in and call that event and do the rest of the custom functionality that i want to do right so moving to the next part that we have plugins basically the function modification i want to modify one of the function like get product get product name i want to modify that one so i will use the plugins okay so plugins i will give you the in-depth knowledge of that one okay so plugins can be found in anywhere magento puts them into plugins folder right so they have the plugins or not so in the plugins folder we have the plugins yeah we have the plugin okay so you can see that so you can see that sitemap plugin is there okay so plugins are there set up file basically for the database like upgrade install create a table okay so this will be helpful for that reason ui so basically ui takes place when we have you can see the magento admin there is a grid format right lists you can say that the list of tables that with the name like uh, we have the catalog we have a product listing or something that comes in the ui part okay so next moving to the part plugins we have already discussed file list this is to install schema upgrade schema there are there are things right so install schema sets up the table upgrade schema modify the table recurring.php runs every after every install or upgrade, install data.php sets up the data when the module is installed. Upgrade data.php basically modifies the data after the module is installed. Recurring data.php applies to the data after every install or upgrade. So if I go and see you the etc file, you can see that. 
right so where is the setup file okay so install install schema upgrade data upgrade schema so this is the role of that one of the plug uh, this one setup folder okay so test basically you are adding the test cases over here right then we have a ui component for the data providers this folder stores the data providers and modifiers for the ui components okay for the like um, you can go and just check this one where is this ui made uh, blog the ui if i go and just open any of the like category form category data provider here you can see that i want the get data function so it will get all the data regarding of it okay so basically the like the ui component data provider this folder always stores the data provider and modify for the ui components like view area layout layout.xml okay next we have the ui part is done then we have the view part i guess view where we have the like the uh, like the html template files over there the xml files the layout files reside, reside in it if you want to update the admin html do the process over here and if you want to modify the front end do the process over here like catalog product xml you want to modify category check out so all kind of you here in the layouts put the layouts templates templating part is there web like the mixin.js require.js you want to modify you can do the rest of that javascript part css part in the web folder <coughs> right so moving to the rest then we have a view done so i think all of the part is done so i will going to give you the recap of that one api for the api part like the rest apis you can see that block we have the like small blocks of code if i want to integrate in the template part i can use i will create a small block and call that in the phtml file controller for the request handler etc consists of all the configuration files helper small block of code that can be reused anywhere i18 translation of the csv files models logic building over here observer any particular event you want to perform then you can like suppose I, I i want to i do the registration process in the magento but at the same time when the registration done i want to take the data and send them into the mailchimp so how i can do we, we can achieve this using the observers next we have a plugins that inbuilt functions we can modify with the help of the plugins set up all the database related files like create table upgrade table install table go with the setup ui component that provides the data providers basically view where we have all the logic regarding the templating file admin front end and uh, templates all will go with the view is basically the front end and the admin html where we can write the templating part right so this is the overview structure most of the part that we are always using that is block controller etc helper this is like you can use but most not okay model is important observer plugins setup ui and the view these all are important blocks right so any doubt any query in that let me know in the comment section and what i missed in that just let me know i think console command i have already tell you about that how to write the console uh, writing is not i have done so i will let you know about how to write the console commands right cron job I, it's not there we, it's a folder like cron tab so where we have to add the cron jobs that can be done multiple times okay so anything which i left cron job i have uh, console commands done okay so anything i missed you just let me know in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video have a great day